Now I know when I tell you 1964 World's Fair, you're gonna tell me Mr. Lincoln, Carousel of Progress, Primeval World, and of course, it's a small world. But I'm gonna tell you that there are more than just attractions that Wed and Walt Disney were able to bring back to Disneyland. In today's video, I'm gonna show you three lessons that were learned from the World's Fair that were applied to the Haunted Mansion, and dare I say, made it one of the best Disney attractions of all time. Bricky here, let's get started with looking at three lessons learned from the World's Fair that were applied to the Haunted Mansion. big lesson that Disney learned at the World's Fair is that they didn't need to spend a ton of money on the attraction buildings. Build a beautiful facade in the park, but then you could save a lot of money by building the actual attraction outside of the park. Therefore giving Disney the ability to save not only money, but a tremendous amount of space by putting the actual rides outside of the park. The genius of this move is that Disney realized that they could build a beautiful, expensive facade that would lure the guest in. However, on the outside of the park, they could put a much more affordable show building that they didn't have to spend a lot of money on because the guests would never see it. Separated by the Disneyland Railroad, guests would never know what was on the other side of the berm. and in the process, Disney could create magic on a budget. This is something Disney would implement in every single park after the World's Fair, and it started with the Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean. The brilliance of putting the attractions outside of the berm allowed Disney to do things that blew the mind of the guests. When you go into the stretching room, you're actually in an elevator that is taking you down below the show building that you see out front. When you walk over to your doom buggy, congratulations, you have just officially left Disneyland. You're walking out of the park. And then at the end, the escalator brings you back inside of the park. The entire time that you're rolling around 999 spirits, you have left one thing behind, and that's Disneyland. Dick Nunes once said that when he flew over Disneyland parks, he always thought, thank God for what we learned operating at the World's Fair about not wasting valuable real estate. A tremendous lesson learned from the World's Fair. Probably one of the best Disney tricks ever, taking the rides and putting them beyond the berm. Now another thing that came from the World's Fair was the ride system for the Haunted Mansion. The original idea was a wax museum, and I think there's a little bit more to that story that we'll discover in another video. But imagine a wax museum that could only hold just a few people at a time. Disney needed to come up with a concept to get people through this haunted mansion, but to get way more than just a dozen. The ride system is another thing that was perfected out at the 64 World's Fair that would work its way back to the Haunted Mansion. Now after the success of It's a Small World was clearly evident, Disney knew that walk-on attractions just weren't gonna do it. So a call was made back home to Disneyland to put a couple of projects on pause because they knew walkthroughs weren't the answer. And Disney and Imagineering had no idea how popular this would be, but they had an instinct. Something in their gut told them that this was gonna be more than a walkthrough. This was gonna be a perennial favorite that was gonna bring in the masses for generations and generations to come. After the success of Ford's Magic Skyway and the boats of It's a Small World, Disney knew that walk-on attractions simply were not the future. They had seen it at the World's Fair and Small World helped show a path to create perfect sight lines, to tell the story equally to everybody and to find a way to get as many guests as possible per hour into a popular attraction. Assuming how popular this attraction would be, they co-opted the technology they had created for adventures through inner space to make what we now know as the Omnimover. But the technology wasn't quite there yet for what they would need for the Haunted Mansion. But the technology also improved on the conveyance system. 
developed for Ford's Magic Skyway at the World's Fair, and immediately after the World's Fair, the Prime Evil World showed up directly after the Grand Canyon scene. Those dinosaur animatronics were originally created for the Ford Magic Skyway at Ford's Pavilion that Disney was hired to create at the World's Fair. Just one of the many souvenirs that were brought back home to Disneyland, but they brought more than just physical goods back to the park, they brought back life experience, which I can't underestimate how important that is when you're on the edge of technology. The more attempts you have at reinventing the world, the closer you get to perfecting it. After the World's Fair had concluded, Walt would return back home to Disneyland to work on his final two attractions, which happened to be two of his very best, Pirates of the Caribbean and the Haunted Mansion. Walt's final attractions were more grown up, more mature, and perfectly blended his entire career of filmmaking, art, and storytelling. Walt's final two attractions were a big departure from his last three. At the end of the 50s in 1959, Walt Disney would introduce the monorail, the Matterhorn, and the submarines. All three great attractions. But you can't deny that by the end of the 60s, when they were working on Pirates of the Caribbean and the Haunted Mansion, there was just a level of sophistication and maturity that these transportation rides just didn't possess. Walt had finally transformed in to the storyteller inside of the parks that he had always wanted to be, making Disneyland a living, breathing story that everyone could venture through and do just that, tell their own story. Disney realized that all of the experience put into the World's Fair would bring back a team that had more knowledge about the technology that they were basically inventing as they were creating. So not only did the World's Fair give the Disney Corporation much needed resources financially, but it gave their team experience that Disney knew would only make things better upon their arrival after knocking out the World's Fair. And that is all shaped by the experience that Walt and his crew at WED got under tremendous amount of pressure, creating four attractions at once and creating them literally for the world on the biggest stage that exists, New York City, the World's Fair 1964. Taking all of that experience and resources and attractions and bringing it right back home to Disneyland. Half a decade had passed, so much life experience had been poured into his team and that life experience was put into the Haunted Mansion. I don't think anyone can deny that the attractions after the World's Fair were more sophisticated. There was life lessons applied to it. You could tell that the Disney theme parks were learning more about Walt's go to put a type of storytelling that people could live and walk into. And even though Walt wouldn't make it to see the Haunted Mansion open or to see it get completed, he would live long enough to see the life experience that crafted the team that was capable of putting this attraction together. And that life experience came from New York City. These attractions had life experience injected into them. You could see all of that life experience get poured into the details, the technology, the storytelling, and the art that would make Pirates of the Caribbean and the Haunted Mansion the gold standard for Disney attractions for generations to come. Just imagine if they would have rushed to make a deadline and have gotten it done before they went out to New York, but instead, Disney trusted his instincts, pumped the brakes, hit pause, and would wait till 1969 when a team could bring it together that had all of the life experience to make an attraction that would change the face of dark ride entertainment. Friends, thank you so much for going on this journey with me and learning three major lessons that were learned from the 1964 World's Fair that were applied to the Haunted Mansion. What an amazing ride. What an amazing moment of time that would change everything forever. Lost inside of that nostalgia is why I think it remains one of the all-time favorite creations of Walt Disney and of Disneyland. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to do this all over again with each and every one of you.